did Mahari Mohammed want to marry Zainab? Yes. Was Ma Zainab married at the time? Yes, but she was. There you go. No, no, she was. Thank you very much, Ahmad. No, no. Mohammed wanted to no, marry no, no. a married woman. No, no, no. But he who desires in his heart a married yeah, woman, woman has already committed, committed adultery in his heart. Yeah. So according to Jesus, yeah. Muhammad yeah. was an adulterer. Zainab was his cousin. Yes. He was not like the person he doesn't know. He was a daughter of his sister, or, or his, her aunt, his aunt. So what happened here? First he, cousin, second cousin, first cousin. First cousin yeah. marriages so he, allowed in Islam. So 31% of birth defects in babies of Pakistani origin. In other words, directly because of what Allah permits Muhammad to do, Pakistani Muslims are suffering. Talk number two. Talk number two. Right. Now I want to talk about the honor and the dignity of adoption. And I want to pull this up from the genealogies of our Lord. So I'm not going to read the entire genealogy, but the first of the genealogies can be found in Luke chapter three. And it says these words. And it's really important that we pick up on these words. I'll read from verse 23. When he began his ministry, Jesus himself was about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph. The son of Joseph, who was the son of Eli, who was the son of Mahat. But yet, if we look at the genealogy given in other places, and I think it's in Mark, or perhaps it's in Matthew, and it reads this. The record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, son of David, the son of Abraham. And then it tells the genealogy from Abraham to Jesus. And then it goes like this. Eliud was the father of Eliza, Eliza the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob. Jacob the father of Joseph was the husband of Mary by whom Jesus was born. Now, you've got two genealogies there. They're different. You, if you compare the names that I read, you have different genealogies. Why is that? It's because one of the genealogies is giving the, 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 the father of Joseph by biology. The other one is giving the father of Joseph by legality. And I'll explain what I mean by that. There's a Jewish law, a Jewish tradition, and I'm gonna evidence it for you now, where it says that if a man dies without having a son, his brothers can marry his wife, and then they have sons, and the sons are legally the sons of the deceased, not the biological son. And I'll show you where you can find that. In Deuteronomy 25, 5 to 10. No, sorry, yeah. Deuteronomy 25, 5 to 10. So I'll just pull that up for you. When brothers live together and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the deceased shall not be married outside of the family to a strange man. Her husband's brother shall go into her and take and take her to himself as a wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. It shall be that the firstborn whom she bears shall assume the name of the dead brother. So when you have the two genealogies in Matthew and Luke, and they're different, it's because one of them is giving the legal father of Joseph, and the other one is giving the biological father of Joseph. Now all of this is as an introduction to something. A clear blue water between Islam and Christianity, which is the honor of adoption, the dignity of adoption. Adoption is a powerful biblical theme. God adopts Israel as his son and speaks to Israel as his son because he has adopted them. And Christ has come 
so that we might be the sons of God, not as through natural means, but sons through adoption. And we are called joint heirs with Christ by adoption. Christ was adopted into the family of Joseph and Joseph was a descendant of David. Now there may be the case that Mary is also a direct descendant of David, but I don't find clear biblical proof of that. Strong church tradition supports that. I'm quite happy to believe it, but from a biblical point of view, Christ legitimately is the descendant of David because he is adopted into the house of Joseph. Adoption in Christianity is something where the adopted son receives the full legal rights of the child. In this country, there are thousands of children who need adoption. And there are many couples who can't have children. And rather than seeking to adopt, they're seeking infertility treatment. They're seeking to have scientists use technology to give them babies that God has said no to, rather than adopt. And we see the state punishing Christians in its adoption services by discriminating against Christians who try to adopt because Christians will teach them Christian values. But we teach children we adopt Christian values because when we adopt a child, they become to us like a biological son, like a biological daughter. They are everything to us and they receive all the legal rights, all the legal rights that our biological child would also have. This duty, this, so I want to ask you, is God calling you to adopt a child? Are you a married couple that can't have children of your own? And is God calling you by the absence of him giving you a natural child, calling you to adopt a child and to love that child as if it was born of your own womb, to give them your own family heritage? Now, this is really important because our liberal elites try to tell us, oh, that Islam and Christianity are the same religion. We teach the same things. And I've demonstrated to you what the Christian position of adoption is. We are the adopted children of God and heirs with Christ, who is the only begotten son of the Father. But in Islam, adoption is abrogated. Adoption is done away with. Let me show you. So we have a story in Islamic sources. So this is taken from, so you know my source, it's taken from Muhammad Ibn Umar records this in 207, Abdullah Amir al, -As al Aslami records this in 151, these are Islamic dates. Muhammad B. Yahya B. Haban records this in 121 by the Islamic calendar. The messenger of God came to the house of Zayd bin Haritha. Zayd was always called Zayd B. Muhammad. Perhaps the messenger of God missed him at that moment so as to ask where is Zayd? He came to his residence to look for him but he did not find him. Zainab, that's the wife of Zaid, Zaid's wife rose to meet him. Because she was dressed only in a shift, a thin veil, the messenger of God turned away from her. She said, he is not here, messenger of God. Come in, you who are dear to me as my father and mother. The messenger of God refused to enter Zainab's enter. Zainab had dressed in haste when she was told the messenger of God was at the door. She jumped up in haste 
and excited the admiration of the messenger of God. Let me just put that in everyday language. Muhammad was attracted, found himself attracted to the wife of his adopted son, Zaid. The story goes on. So he turned away, murmuring something that could not scarcely be understood. However, he didn't say overtly, glory to God the Almighty. Glory be to God who causes the hearts of men to turn. When Zaid came home, his wife told him that the messenger of God had come to his house. Zaid said, why didn't you ask him to come in? He replied, I asked him, but he refused. Did you hear him say anything? He asked, she replied. As he turned away, I heard him say, glory be to God the Almighty, glory be to God who causes hearts to turn. So Zaid, the adopted son of Muhammad, left and having come to the messenger of God, he said, messenger of God, I have come and heard that you came to my house. Why didn't you go in? You who are dear to me as my father and mother. Messenger of God, perhaps Zainab has excited your admiration and so I will separate myself from her. Zaid could find no possible way to approach her after that day. He would come to the messenger of God and tell him so, but the messenger of God would say to him, keep your wife. Zaid separated from her and left her and she became free. While the messenger of God was talking with Aisha, a fainting overcame him when he was released from it and smiled and said, who will go to Zainab to tell her the good news saying that God has married her to me. So, Muhammad, according to Islamic sources, admired the wife of his adopted son what was the source and his adopted son what was the source and his adopted son we need to know felt, if it's authentic felt, or not. we'll show it we'll show it and his adopted son felt honor obligated to divorce his wife for muhammad and this, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah, no, I'm doing a talk. And this passage, this event, this event led to this verse in the Quran being revealed. So let's just pull it up. In Surah 33, 4 to 5, we read. Now he wants the source. My criticism is of the Quran. Listen. Surah 33, 4 to 5. You need to know what you were reading. Surah 33, 4 to 5. It's in Al Tabari. That's my source for the story I've just read. That's my source. I'm quoting Al Tabari. Al Tabari was not companion. So, could you put the light on me, bro? And the camera, so that I can read. So Surah 33, 4 to 5. Now, the brother is quick to jump on something, but he doesn't understand that my criticism is of the Quran. Listen to what the Quran says. Allah has not made for any man two hearts in his one body, nor has he made your wives from who, your wives whom you divorce by Zihar, your mothers, nor has he made your adopted sons your sons. So the Quran abolishes adoption. There is clear legal differences and consequences between Islam and Christianity. Christianity affords to the adopted, adopted child higher dignity in all things than Islam affords to the adopted child. This is something that's important. It has legal ramifications and legal consequences. There's real differences between Islam and Isla uh, Christianity. 
the 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 point that the brother wasn't listening to is I'm criticizing the Quran. I was simply I was simply giving an introduction because that story by some Muslim sources is the reason why this verse was revealed. It goes on. It goes on. You listen to verse 5. Call them by the names of their fathers that is juster in the sight of Allah. But if you know not their fathers' names, call them your brothers in faith or you or your mullahs. But there is no blame on ye if ye make a mistake therein. And the intention of your hearts, and the intention of your hearts, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. So what the Quran is saying is that adopted children are not given the same dignity in Islam that adopted children are given in Christianity. When you adopt a child into your family, you need to give them an inheritance, you need to give them a heritage, you need to give them an identity. They've already been abandoned by their biological parents. But Islam is saying you can't even call them your sons. You can't even call them by your family name. These children remain completely rejected and have no families of their own because of Islamic teaching. They are abandoned by the bad parents that are orphaned them. But then Islam says that this family that takes care of them can't even call them as their own family. No, it's not saying that. It's saying that That's what it says don't literally. Don't literally. Don't literally it says, I'll read it again because he wasn't it listening. Means, don't take the names of their father from them. Made your whatever adopted sons, is, whatever their father's no, no. Name is, your mother, so nor has he, he made he he your adopted exactly. sons your sons. That's what the Quran says. What is dignified? That's what, what it is says. What is dignified for the children is to carry their own father's exactly. name, their which, which name. they don't after, have don't you, because their fathers have or not, a, may have, have abandoned them. Even so, they still belong. Even to so, their, they still belong. Are you to saying their it doesn't matter? It does matter because there is law, there is the inheritance, there is a right for uh, the children and non. -children. Children, and they are not equal and they will ne never be equal why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command uh, the believer to look after the orphan and to support them and to look after them but you don't uh, just give them the right for for uh, which they Prophet don't said, have anyone Besides, who look after the orphan he's going to be with me in paradise like these two fingers together that wasn't the point that I made that was not the point that I made the prophet come with an adopted child in Islam Stop does not receive the same honor and dignity and the same rights and privileges and the same acceptance as they would under Christian teaching and that is the difference between Islam and Christianity but it gets worse the difference is he can shout and it gets worse but he tried to twist while according to you you know according to you Prophet Muhammad, he come, peace upon him, come with the law to be applied to all mankind while the law of, of Moses is applied only to the Jew, nothing to do with the Christianity, with the Christianity coming with a different teaching. And according to you, so, according to yeah, the yeah. no, no, I didn't finish. So, it gets worse. I didn't finish. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. listen to I what the Quran finish. says. I didn't finish. No one invited you to finish. talk. No one I didn't invited finish. you. When behold, no, behold. Thou behold. did say to one yeah. who had received the grace of Allah. So, this is talking about how Muhammad felt about Z the wife of Zaid. Listen to what it says. This is Allah's witness testimony against Muhammad. Behold, thou didst say to the one who had received the grace of Allah and thy favor, retain thy wife. That's talking to his adopted son. Muhammad said, you keep your wife. 
when you said to me I'll divorce my wife so you can have her Mohammed said no no you keep your wife you say you and, Mah and Allah is quoting Allah is quoting Mohammed that's why Mohammed this one Allah said retain thou this is why why that's what it says and so they contradict their own Quran notice the bad manners Hypocrite and it goes on. Lock in the Muslim and don't allow them. And fear Allah. Okay. And fear Allah. But thou didst hide in thy heart that which Allah was about to make manifest. So in other words, Allah says that Muhammad desired the wife of his adopted son. What kind of father is that? What kind of example is that? Let's, let's apply this because on your own father. Allah, yeah. Allah said, you desired it, but I was going to reveal it before you desired, before it became public. Let's apply this. So, let's apply this on the father. He wants me to read it again. I will oblige him. His own daughter. This but fear Allah, yeah. his, but your thou, God, Muhammad, your own God, did hide in thy heart that which Allah was about to make manifest. And what was that he was hiding? Thou did fear the people, but it is a more fitting what was that thou hiding? should fear Allah. Then when Zaid has dissolved his marriage with her, with the necessary formulary, we joined her in marriage to you. So what was so he hiding? So what was Muhammad hiding? What was he hiding? He was hiding in his heart what? that he wanted to marry the wife of his adopted son. Right. Ooh. That's what he was that's what he was doing. Adultery of the heart, you be me. And your own God, no, 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 your own God, no, your own God sent no. the angel to Mary to tell her that the father will overshadow you to beget his son of the supposed wife of Joseph. So your your God is worse than even if we say Muhammad is done that. Your, your own so, God, he be, ladies and gentlemen, he son ladies and gentlemen. Muhammad yeah. desired to marry yeah. the wife he of his adopted your, son your father, before your father Allah made it permissible. The mother of his so Allah is Joseph. the sock puppet of Muhammad doing what he wants. You're wrong, bro. Yeah, you're but right. let's see. Let's see what, what does our Lord what Jesus Christ say about this. Yeah. Yeah. But he, but he who desires in his heart a married yeah, woman, with woman has already committed, committed adultery in his heart. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. according to Jesus, yeah. Muhammad yeah. was an adulterer. Yeah. And then, yeah. then, yeah. then, yeah. then yeah. Jesus, Muhammad, yeah. Muhammad yeah. by yeah. the yeah. sock yeah. puppet yeah. Allah, yeah. as yeah. 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 gives a revelation yeah. that Zaid can divorce his wife if he, if he he can divorce his wife yeah. and does divorce God, his wife but so what his does God daughter. say about divorce and your your God what does God beget say beget what does God say about divorce and share, what does God share say about his, divorce his daughter with Joseph so we need to watch the video I gave all the quotes so in Malachi. If he, so if he admit that, he did that one, he is a false prophet. Because he is a false prophet, he will never do that. He will never do that. So it's a what, what I'm saying, it's a your, God, your Quran saying, testifies your that Muhammad wanted to marry his married daughter, son's wife. That's Joseph, what your Quran says. Uh, uh, this is <laughs> the, no dignity of your own father. Oh, your own father. Oh, 
Muhammad is a human, God but when your God, but he can say through providence. No, 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 no. So, he is God a prophet, the Bible, but your God cannot be he cannot through be God. Prophet. Yeah, yeah, through prophet. He cannot yeah, through be. prophet. He yeah, yeah. 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 So, with let us look. So, Allah permits the divorce because Muhammad wanted to marry and wanted to marry his adopted son. And that is the testimony of Allah, not Bob. Allah said that, not Bob. No, listen to what God said about divorce. This is another thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and groaning, because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. Yet you say, for what reasons? Because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But not one has done so who has a remnant of the Spirit. And what did that one do while he was seeking a godly offspring? Take heed then to your spirit and let no one deal treacherously against the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce. So God hates divorce, but Allah permits divorce. God honors adoption with full legal, full rights of family heritage and inheritance, but Allah denigrates the adopted child. God hates the lust of the art and calls it adultery, but Allah witnesses against Muhammad that he desired to marry his then married son's wife. How do you reply to that? My reply is according to No, reply to what I said. No, forget about the yeah, yeah. Okay, divorce. You, you deal with my argument. Come here, bro. The divorce is the last, last lawful things allowed by God because marriage is secret and it's very strong tie in front of God. But when men and women can, can say they cannot carry on, the divorce is the best solution. While according to your own uh, Bible, you know, uh, and don't don't worry, you know, uh, a wife can jump from one to another to another, and every man can uh, kick her out. While I I ask you many times to and block me on your channel so I can put in the second. Okay, I'm done section. talking to Yaya now. No, no, Abbas, no, no. Abbas, Abbas, you don't want Abbas. to talk to me. Yeah. You, you, you interrupted me, I want to challenge you. Yeah, challenge me. Okay, so in the Quran, mm -hmm. Allah testifies against Muhammad and says this, okay, okay, not against this is, which is the marriage between um, Zainab, is that again the name? Zainab, Zainab, yeah. Zainab and Muhammad. Zainab bin Dajjal. So, when it says that thou didst desire, and he, he hid it, what was that desire he was hiding? So you, you need to explain that, what the desire right. was. Yeah, I will you explain it. Was the last. I, I, the no, last. I will explain it. He asked me to explain yeah, it. Yes, yes. I will explain it. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Muhammad desired to marry Zainab. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of father wants to marry, bearing in mind at this moment in time, he saw Zaid as his son. He wanted to marry Zaid's wife. What kind of father, what kind of loving father wants to marry the adopted son's wife? Yeah. So answer that question. Okay, uh, what I say is how let I... Me, let how, me say, just give him the I reference. I'm listening. I, I just how give him the reference. Deuteronomy 24, 1. Come on, Abbas. Deuteronomy 22, 28, 29. He does this all the time. He just pulls out his script and starts reciting that. Yeah, I'm listening, Abbas. How I listening, Abbas. How I, how I okay, listening. anyone who wants to listen to me and Abbas... No, 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 it's okay. Let him run. 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 Talk to me, Abbas. Talk to me, Abbas. Okay, how I understand this verse is this. You need to understand whole context or in, uh, intertextually. So what, what's the context? What, what was it? 
Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zainab was his cousin. Yes. He was not like the person he doesn't know. She was a daughter of his sister, or his, her aunt, his aunt. So what happened here? First he, cousin, second cousin, first cousin. First cousin yeah. marriages so he, allowed in Islam. So he was the one. All those people. He was the sorry. one who insisted his family to let Zainab marry with Zaid, and Zaid was a slave. Nobody wanted uh, Zainab to marry with a slave, a Zaid. So because they think Zaid, slaves are lower. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam feels dutiful here. Now, now if Zainab is going to get divorced, who's going to marry her? She's going to be without husband. So that's what he was thinking. If Zaid is going to divorce, so should I marry her? Because I'm the one who insisted. Everybody else gave guarantee that they should marry Zainab to Zaid. So that was, I believe, that was in his heart. That should I marry her? Now she's going to be without husband. So that's what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Yes, you can marry her because she is not your. Blood son's daughter. She is your adopted son's daughter, and I don't think there's anything wrong in that. He felt dutiful. He, he felt dutiful to marry Zainab because she's going to be without husband. Okay. And there is nothing, there's nothing about blood or something wrong. Right, law for right. I'm just going to talk to everyone else because Abbas is not listening to me. So, ladies and gentlemen, without any prompting from me, you heard Abbas admit that because of Muhammad. Hamid's example, first cousin marriages are permissible in Islam, which means yeah, that Allah didn't that. know about the genetic problems that happen because of gen first cousin marriages. Amongst the Pakistani Muslim community, there are a disproportionate number of genetic defects in their population vis-a-vis -vis any other Asian community in the UK, whether it be Sikh, Hindu, or Christian, or Zoroastrian, or any other. No, furthermore, 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 I didn't introduce, interrupt you, Abbas. I did not interrupt you, Abbas. Always with Abbas, it's the same. Always with Abbas, it's the same. That's what I'm saying, you're changing the topic. Always with Abbas, it's the same. You try to talk to him and then he interrupts but I will now interrupt him and I guarantee again and again he will complain that I'm interrupting him because it happens every single time no furthermore furthermore the ancient church even before Islam prohibited first century marriages so in other words the ancient church knew better than the Allah of the Quran. Now, moving on to the second point that he made. That is not the point. Because the right point now. of the Quran is stating is that at the time when Muhammad considered Zayd his son and Zainab his son's wife, he wanted to marry his son's wife. Now he says no, but listen to what the Quran actually says. Listen, read it, listen. Now I'm going to be interrupting Abbas and he will be complaining. He will be complaining. Behold, thou did say to one who had received the grace of Allah and thy favor, retain thou thy wife. In other words, Zayd had come to him and said, I'll divorce my wife so you can marry her. And Muhammad had said, and Muhammad had said, Muhammad had said, keep your wife. Show me where it says. But then the Quran, but then the Quran goes on to say, and fear Allah, but thou didst hide in thy heart that which Allah was about to manifest. In other words, Muhammad desired something before Allah made it permissible. So, now I want to ask you a question about it. Why you say Zayd says so you can marry her? When, when, Allah, quote, when Allah quotes Muhammad, when Allah quotes Muhammad, and says, retain thou thy wife. Were they married or unmarried? Well, Muhammad is telling her, him not to divorce her. 
No, no, no. Yeah, so they were married, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Right, so I wasn't lying then, was I? <laughs> well, what did I say? You see, you didn't even listen no, to what I, I said. Say. No, you say. So, you say that so, so they were married marry when Mohammed said you that. You said that, said to Mohammed, so, so you can marry her. But thou didst hide in thy heart. What did he hide in his heart? Should he marry her? Or what did he hide in his heart? I'm not telling you. Should he marry her? Because now Zad's going to divorce her. She's going to be without husband. So should I marry her? Because I'm the one who said to Zad, to Zad, Zainab's family, that Zad is a good man. You should marry her. But now Zad is leaving her. So it's my responsibility. And why is Zad leaving her? Well, they, they didn't get on. They didn't get on because she he no, was no, a slave. No, no. Uh -huh. He was from poor family. She was from a, above Quraysh top family. And your Quraysh. sources for this are? They, they, they are also commentators as well. They, ah, they commentators. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so not hadith they, they, commentators. They, they, no, I'm, I'm sure these hadith also talk about it. <laughs> ah, right. So earlier also, when I was when I was quoting Tabari. He was saying, show me your sources, show me your sources, show me your sources. Say, say, and I literally was reading from Al Tabari. <laughs> but I'm not but now he's come up I'm with a counter uh, reason for the divorce. When I and I've asked him for his sources, and what are they? Okay. Commentators. Zero. 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 Commentators. And hadith. Where? Which hadith? And, uh, I'm going to bring it to you. Well, bring it then. Look, I don't, you came prepared. I bring it. I didn't come prepared. Right. You want to talk about it? Uh, next week I can come prepared. But I'm saying that. So when I say commentator, we accept any commentator. If they back whatever they're saying by Quran and Hadith. If commentator is not backing it from Sahih Hadith, then we say it's his own opinion. But whatever you quoted Tabari was saying, Tabari has no authentic source of saying that Muhammad has lust after Zainab. What he is quoting from, I believe, is, is Ibn Ishaq. And Ibn Ishaq is not authentic source. He was considered as the making of Hadith. He was a liar and he was kicked out of Medina as well, Ibn Ishaq, by Imam Malik because Ibn Ishaq made him all the stories. So Tabari is quoting Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Ishaq. So is just, just so you know, in Buhari's own lifetime, he was considered a deviant. So just because someone was considered a deviant doesn't mean that suddenly he can't become an authority later on. So, furthermore, 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 listen to what the Quran actually says. It says, Fear Allah. Then, this is Allah speaking to Muhammad. Yeah. Then, when Zaid had dissolved his marriage with her, yes. with the necessary formality, we joined in marriage to thee. So in other words, the desire to marry her was while she was still married. Why are you saying desire so to marry So Allah is testifying that Muhammad wanted to marry a married woman. Does the Quran use the word that... That's Allah's testimony against Muhammad. The Quran said what is in your heart. Tell me, would your wife... Let me ask you this question, Abbas. Okay. If your wife, God forbid, and I don't suspect for one second that this would ever happen, I'm not trying to impugn your character in any way, but do a hypothetical experiment with me. Sure. That you desired to marry another woman. A married woman, mm -hmm. and your wife learned about it. How would she react? <laughs> My wife asked me a question. Why? She would ask a question. Why? Yeah, why? You don't think she'd get upset? She, get yeah, she might get upset. She might get. She might get upset. I mean, you do know your wife. Yeah. If she was studying here and I asked the same question. My wife is a very big hard woman. You know? Yeah, she's yeah, a big yeah. hard woman. I, Fair I, enough. I, I, we'll I, take him I, at his word. I actually tested her jokingly many times. What about if I got another wife as well? And you know what she said? You know what she said? It's up, it's up to you? Yeah. That's what she said. So, why, yeah, she said that. So yeah. I, I tested her already. Yeah. But would she say that? Would she say that if that woman was married? And if that other woman was married? Did she say that? Um. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah, she would. Yeah. So you, you no, now we're not going to talk about his wife. We'll just stop the conversation there. I don't want to talk about your wife. But I, I would have a problem with any woman permitting adultery. My point is that Muhammad was not a good father to his son because he desired to marry his son's wife. And, and also you don't hear that repenting. That's my okay, point. Actually, 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 okay, fine. I, I understand what you're trying to say. I'm going to give my example now with this scenario. If my wife learns that I find one woman, I was a guardian of her or very close to her, and I marry her with some other man, yeah? Now their marriage is not getting on together. Yeah, she's in, in trouble and he's going to leave her and she's going to be on her own. And then I'm thinking, should I 
marry her because I am the one who gave her to the other man. She's going to be on her own. And my wife learned about it. I think my wife wouldn't mind that. My wife would say, I'm a very responsible man. I'm taking that responsibility. I gave that woman to the other man and he's going to leave her and I'm going to marry my wife. I say that's a very good thing. I, I, I apply that example onto this story. So, so let, 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 let me be clear. His counter commentary is still as of yet unevidenced. We've got Al-Tabari versus commentary. Now, furthermore, furthermore, let's be clear. I am saying to us all that we don't need Islam because we have something better in Jesus. No, you don't. I can the Christian it. I can logic, it to you. the Christian logic is that right attitudes leads to right behavior. That if you have the right attitudes, you will do the right thing. No, no. Christ, Christ says he teaches us not to act from lust, not to act from desire, to control our minds. There is no getting around the fact that when Muhammad desired to marry his son's wife, not only was that a betrayal of his son, because at that time adoption had not been delegitimized, it was because of this very episode that adoption was delegitimized. So at that moment in time, he's still thinking that that is his son. That that is a member of his family, adopted son, and the he's thinking adopted that he wants to marry son. his what his son's wife. But also, what oh. kind of character is it of Muhammad to want to marry a married woman? No, no, no. What kind of character is no, that, no, no. madam? Is. You had a question. Oh, I have a question. Let, let, let her ask a question. Profit. What's your question, madam? What's your question? Bob, I have a question. Okay. Okay. When you say you have a better religion than Islam, and you try to say, oh, I'm going to show you God of your Bible, who convenient, who convened uh, adultery in the Bible. So how come that God you follow, when God of the Bible says to David, I was talking to somebody else earlier as well, I'm going to take your wives and give it to your neighbor and he will do to them in the open what you done in the secret and what David done in the secret he commit adultery with Bathsheba he and so God instead of stoning Bathsheba and David to death stone to death according to the law of Moses he said I'm going to give your wives to the neighbor so what kind of a God you follow that who's giving wives of David to the neighbor to have open sex so all Israel can see so only a bass could turn the idea of God's judgment on David for adultery as somehow God legitimizing adultery. Exactly, that's a God often uses nations and their sin to punish nations for their sin. God does that. God has always done that. That doesn't mean that God is sanctioning adultery. Yes, but what we have is that Allah is permitting, is permitting the and giving not license to Muhammad's desires not like a sock puppet. Like a sock puppet. God is pronouncing judgment on David for his adultery. Okay. And he is using the sinful nations around Israel to punish Israel by using their sin as a punishment on Israel. He is not saying that God agrees with adultery. Yes, he does. You're embellishing something. Second Samuel. Let's pull it up. Second Samuel, chapter twelve, verses eleven and twelve. I'm going to read it, and this is what the God of the Bible is saying. Now we know the background is David has committed sin. Now the prophet Nathan came and says, God has passed judgment on you. On you. What is the judgment? Thus says the Lord. Behold. I will raise up evil against you. I will raise up evil. I'm talking to my brother. So he calls brother, it brother, evil. Let me read. Let so me he read. calls it evil. Let, let me read it. Continue. Read. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against so you. So it's evil. Continue. You heard that. Out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. Yes. And he shall lie with your wife in the sight of the sun. 
for you did it secretly. What David done is secretly? Adultery. For you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Meaning, that David commit adultery yeah. and God will convene adultery with his wife, go to sleep with the neighbor. My two questions, there are two problems. According to the law of Moses, will David fall under the law of Moses? Law of Moses said, Deuteronomy 22 verse 22, the adulterer should be stoned to death. So according to that law, Bathsheba and David should be stoned to death. Instead of that, they were not stoned to death. His wife going to go and sleep with the neighbor. I say, what kind of a just God is that? Is that what you call a moral God? Is not a moral God. On the other hand, Allah is telling Moses to marry, not sleep with her. Allah says, to marry, he, he can he can defend. This God is not a God. This is not a word of God. So here, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying you can marry her. Here, God say I'm going to give your wife to the neighbor. It's like that. I sleep with the neighbor. Judge say you are a naughty boy. Now your wife is going to sleep with the neighbor. What kind of judge is that? That's stupid. That's not justice. That's injustice. My wife so, has to do with so let me let me let nothing could demonstrate as clear the difference between Islam and Christianity. Because in the very verse that he quotes, Yahweh says that he's going to raise up evil. So he's condemning as evil the evil that he allows. No allows. He, he allows it. it. No allows. He will he do allows it. it. He will do it. But by he contrast, said, I will. I will by it. contrast, Islam permits the marriage of first cousins. By contrast, Islam denigrates adopted sons so that those who are abandoned or find themselves orphaned because of other catastrophes and don't even have a family can't even call the family that takes care of them as their own family and furthermore Allah condones the desire of Muhammad to marry a married woman as if something like that kind of desire is legitimate or fair. Now he asked me for sources. He asked me for sources. No, no, Samuel. So, we've referenced. No, 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 so, I'll deal with Samuel and then I'll come back to this. Okay. Samuel. So, so my, in Samuel, my, my person, in Samuel, David was not sold to death. God often uses. God often uses. Yeah, we heard that. Yeah. The other nations and their sin and their evil as an instrument of judgment on Israel and on one another. He does it many times. It is a via, a, a way That's that he carries out his question. judgment. That's not the question. No, you didn't answer no. my question. Bear with me. I did answer all your questions. So, my question is why David and Bathsheba You haven't yet provided the law, your references. According to the law of Moses, why they were not stoned to that? Because instead, God, instead of like, because God yeah. wished for, for David to come to salvation because in his purposes God wished for David to repent because David, David is an essential part of the history of Israel. So law, David, so, law doesn't apply on David. It allows as the law giver applies it and the law giver is Yahweh and Yahweh applies his law as he sees right. fit. Okay, what about he is the judge. Okay, what about Do you agree? Do you agree that a judge has the right to decide the punishment? Yes. Do you agree that agree. Yahweh is the judge of David? Yes, I agree. Therefore, yeah, yeah, no. if Yahweh chooses not to stone David, that is the right okay, judgment of the judge. I will come what about, one second. What about Bathsheba? Abbas, sorry. What about Again, does the judge have the right to judge <laughs> according to his purposes? Okay, let's say you're not going to. So, exactly. You are not, he took you his are, son no, no, you and ruined his kingdom. You, you can't hide behind that. No, that? I've given you your answer. Is, now let me go back to this. Abbas. Problem is multiple. Abbas. For example, let's Abbas. say God decided Abbas. to let David go. Abbas. What Abbas. What has Abbas, Abbas, why is my Abbas, to go and sleep with the Abbas, 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 Abbas,
Sayyid bin Haritha came to the Prophet complaining about his wife. The Prophet kept on saying to him, be afraid of Allah and keep your wife. Aisha said, if Allah's messenger were to conceal anything of the Quran, he would have concealed this verse. Zainab used to boast before the wives of the Prophet and used to say, you you were given in marriage by your families while I was married to the Prophet by Allah from over seven heavens. And Thabit recited the verse. But O oh, Muhammad, you did hide in your heart that which Allah was about to make manifest. You did fear the people. Now, if Muhammad's desire was only was only to marry someone who was simply divorced as opposed to wanting to marry someone who was married, why did he fear the people? Why did he fear the people? First of all, we know he failed to answer as uh, uh, the second chamber chapter. Well, people will make and their own decisions. Every decision. Christian, every Christian. People will make answer, their own decisions. His answer was, if God decided, who are you to ask? I mean, brilliant no, answer. No, what brilliant I said answer. was, God is the judge, God so is the judge, and I the say, lawgiver, I say, and he applies his laws God, how he sees fit. We know God. And you agree with that logic? We know God by you, his actions. Do you disagree we with that logic? We know God by his actions. I, do you I, disagree I, with that I, logic? I agree with you that God is the judge of everyone, even and if the law given, given, yeah. what, and he applies the law I, as he sees What fit. I disagree is this is not a God judgment. This is not. This is a man-made book and the man-made interpolation. And what he seems to forget, God cannot, what Abbas seems can't to God, forget, God cannot. is in the verse that he quoted, God calls it evil. And he does evil. But Allah evil. calls what Muhammad did good. So your God says evil, but I'm going to do that evil. So you're calling God is doing the work of evil. God God allows, he, evil, God allows evil according said, to his said, purposes. I will. He said, I will give yes, your wives. So I will does, so he does, allow so he, evil so he does is evil. what he says. He does, he, and that's exactly he, what I'm he, saying. He does not God say, says, he does not I say. will allow evil. He does, I'm saying, God allows he, evil. He say, He does not say it will happen to your family. He said, I will give your wife. So giving wife to the neighbor is evil. Does he call it evil? So, yes, so he does there you go. So he does evil. So God he allows you, evil. So you agree, God is the worker of evil. So coming he, back to the God Quran. God work for evil. Coming back to the Quran. Yes. Coming back to the Quran. Yes. Do you think yeah, you can hide from the Bible? Do you think, come back to the Quran. Do you think we are that, proud of the Quran? Do you think it is a good Muslim who desires to marry a married woman? Well, first of all, you have to prove that he was desiring to marry her. He said, "What is in your that's heart? literally what, what, the is, what is in your heart?" Yes. He said, "That's what he says." Which is about to be what was, is in your yeah, which is no, going you to be revealed. Do, you saying it was a desire? His desire was in his heart. Yes. I say it was in his heart was that now she's going to be without husband, and I am the one who make her marry him. Now they didn't get on. Should I marry her? So Allah says, "What is in your heart?" Yes, I say you can marry her. You will marry her. He lost so that, that, that it's not lost. His adopted lost. son's he, he wife lost. No, it's his and his first cousin. She was his cousin first. And we in Islam, we don't say you can't marry with the cousins. No, in Islam, it's not a, because it's not Allah around. didn't understand genetics. Okay. And he didn't understand that if you marry your first cousin, there's genetic problems that come out of this. And if you don't believe me, just study it yourselves. Okay. What is the person age of this cousin's marrying in genetic problems? What's the person age? It's disproportionately high amongst Muslim Pakistanis. Yeah. No, well, what, what, Am I wrong? How high? How I don't. I, I don't have I, the I, exact I, stats. I, of what I'm saying is, even I'm people, sure it'll turn e up in the comments. Even people from different families, <laughs> they, their children can have problems as well. All sort of problems. They can yes, have as well. but uh, uh, there is a higher disproportionate problem per capita in the population of Pakistani Muslims because of their custom of marrying their first I to, cousins. I need to know what. Some 
one thing that the percent? church condemned what? back in the 5th you century. Studied, you studied, what percentage is that? I, I don't know the exact percentage. So I just know that it's higher okay, and maybe, disproportionate. Maybe it's the 3%, maybe 0.1%, we don't know. We need to find out what. So if it's 99% is okay, so then what's wrong with that? No, it's amongst first married cousins. You don't even do the maths right. Yeah. You marriage. see, you didn't even live. You know, I heard you, I heard you, what I'm saying. The genetic faults because the first married cousin is higher per capita than any other population. What I'm saying if it's the majority of first married cousins is not Okay, here's, here's a reference. Here's a reference. Yeah. Marriage between first cousins doubles risk of birth defects, says researchers. So basically these researchers know better than Allah because Allah permits what first number? marriage cousins. Give me, give me numbers. Listen, a study of 13,500 born in Bradford concludes the cultural practice in Pakistani communities outweighs the effects of deprivation. Marriage between first cousins doubles the risk of children being born with birth defects according to a study seeking answers to the higher than expected rates of deaths and congenital abnormalities in the babies of the Pakistani community of Bradford. Researchers, what what source is that? the source that I'm reading, yeah. must be a Christian source, I guess. The Guardian apparently is a Christian source. The most anti Christian newspaper in Britain is apparently a Christian source. So, so looks like, well, we okay, listen. 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 We know there's some missionaries there as well. Researchers have conflu concluded yeah. that the cultural practice of marriage, yeah. which is directly linked to what Allah permits Muhammad to do, and that's why Muslims do it. Okay. Between first cousins is a bigger factor than any other, outweighing the effects of deprivation in parts of Bradford, where the study was carried out. Marriage to a blood relative accounted for nearly 31% of birth defects in babies of Pakistani origin. In other words, directly because of what Allah permits Muhammad to do, Pakistani Muslims are suffering. So in other words, in other words, go and research it yourself, I will. Go ahead. I'm not going to take your So in other words, because of Allah's guidance, there are higher rates of death amongst Muslim children. But as far back as the 5th century, the church was condemning first cousin marriages. And I could probably find evidence even earlier than that. So that means that two centuries before the so-called prophet, who was so-called guided by God, Allah, Christians two centuries before knew it was a bad idea to marry a first cousin, but the author of the Quran didn't. Okay, anyway, this is, this is beside the point. Oh, anyway. No, no, this is, oh, anyway. I say I'm going to research on that. This is the point you're making and reading. It was article. part of your defense to reference the and fact I'm, that Zainab was the first cousin and, of Muhammad. And I'm saying, I'm still standing on that. I'm, I said nothing so wrong. So if it's part of your defense, it didn't, it didn't, it's legitimate me to criticize first cousin marriages. If I'm wrong, didn't in the Old Testament it says the same tribe people they used to marry in the same tribe. They used to marry the same tribe, so especially their daughters must marry the same tribe man, so they will not go out of, the money will not go out of their tribe. Pull up the reference. So, so I, well, I, I'm asking you, Is that because I read somewhere, I can't pull up the reference. Uh, I would need to see the I, reference. I can't. So, so you reference. know your Bible, you refute me, then if I'm wrong, you just tell me I'm wrong. No, I just, no. I, I, in I your, just show in, me the reference. Bible, I know the Israelites can only marry Israelites, yes. but I'm not aware even that the it's, same tribe. I'm not aware that they have to stay within the same tribe. I don't think that's true. The daughters, the daughters, I don't think they have to stay within marry the, same. In the same tribe. I'm saying, so their money of oh the wait, now he's certain. What? I am saying, I think you're wrong. No, so I'm now's the chance I to pull up a I reference. I'm pretty sure it says that. Well, let's pull up a reference. And then we can talk about it. I can't pull up the reference right now. But in your Bible, even this says that if the 
our elder brother dies or brother dies, his wife must marry the other brother. Yes. Yes. Is that, is that the but other that doesn't mean yeah. that the wife is related to the brother. That's, I mean, this is. This but you're saying Muhammad was related to his own wife. Yes, she has a choice. Did not, you hear that? Yes, she has a choice not to marry him. You're Does saying that Muhammad was related to his own wife by blood. First cousin, yes. Yes. First cousin. Yes. And we've already demonstrated. And I say I have no problem with that. And that I'm saying you have a problem with that. We have so no you problem don't with have that. A, you and don't I don't have a problem with the I don't believe your article. That I, don't believe, out I don't believe in your article. The statistics in the article. I don't believe in the article. He doesn't believe in the article I, I, because it puts I, I Muhammad in a bad light. I don't know who's writing this so article. So in other words, Abbas is admitting. I don't know who's writing this article. Abbas is admitting that if the article is true, it puts Allah and Muhammad in a bad light. Science says that the majority of the children are born out of the same uh, cousins is wrong yes then you have a point and I say that is not the case right and I, and what I, evidence? And I say I will research on that can we pull back up the article maybe it names the professors well, well, I'm refuting no, I'm not going to believe whatever article you I'm going to do my thorough research yes thorough, thorough. and when you do your thorough research thorough. and you find that it's no. correct no. I know well, let's I'm, see if we can I'm, find out who, who did the research. Thorough research about that but what I'm saying that if that's the case if five percent of the children are defect, born defected, I say ninety-five percent are not. So I say the, the weight is more on that on the right side. There's nothing wrong marrying them because ninety-five percent of the time you will be all right. A little bit of the time you are not right. Right. I'm so going to give you the reference. That can happen even if you are not the Dr. same. Doctor Iman Sheridan from Leeds University carried out the study oh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. now you have a geneticist a geneticist is telling you that marrying your first cousin is a bad idea I, but Abbas is saying no, I won't believe him I'm saying that I'm not gonna make on the argument and to do on my let's own look research. at the consequences research, then I will come let's look at the consequences every let's, year let's get there are about no you brought the first cousin no, no, thing as a part of no, your your defense. I, I say. Yes, you did. No, 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 Who heard him do no, that? No, no, Speak no, I, up. I didn't. I, I, yeah, did you hear him use no, the first cousin's no, part of his defense? Was not, no, I said that. that yes, you no, did. I said that. No, no. Yes, you did. I was, and now you're backtracking. I was using that as a reference. I was referring that he knew her before. And you because, said that because, no, because he was, she was the first cousin. cousin. No, no. Because meaning, meaning he knew her. That was the reference I was using. I wasn't using though because she was his first cousin, so she must marry her. He must marry her. No. I was saying that he knew her because she was his first cousin. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So listen. I, I wasn't making that case of my argument. I said, so he said that you should marry the Listen my, my, to the article of So he felt this listen. He felt responsible. No, there's no the risk of having no a baby I'm not with that. birth defects, yeah. usually heart or nervous system problems, which can sometimes Again. be fatal, Again. is still small. But it rises from 3% in the general Pakistani population to 6% amongst those who married to blood relatives. The researchers also found a doubling of the risk in the babies of white British women who were over the age of 34 that increased risk rising from 2 to 4 percent every year there are about 90 more baby deaths than would be expected in the Pakistani community in England and Wales because of birth defects. Such issue is highly sensitive. And why is it sensitive? Because as we have just seen, Sharia law, the perfect guidance from Allah, this so-called infallible guidance is direct responsible for first cousin marriages so in other words Western secular law and classical Christian law and medieval Christian law are all better than Sharia law in this matter. So the great all-knowing God got it wrong, but the Christian church got it right. Even though I, I entertain him on that, even though I say I, this is not the topic. It is the topic. No.
Who no, brought up? When you say it, who brought up yeah. first cousin marriages? Me or him? I didn't. Alas. I didn't. And why did he bring it up? He's lying. As part he's of his so defence for so why Mohammed lusted. I'm the one who bring first cousin marriages. I did not. Mohammed wanted to speak. marry let his speak. cousin. Let me speak. Let me speak. That's what Abbas said. I didn't even say that. Mohammed wanted to marry his here. first he's cousin. That's what he said. I, what I said was this. Zainab Muhammad knew her before. How? Because she was his first cousin. That's all I say. I never say oh, it was, he married her because she was his first cousin. I didn't say that. So you are putting Did he want to marry her? No, that's another topic. That's another question. Did he want to no, marry her? You understand what you said? I, you said, I said. I never I, said what you no, said no, no, I said. No, 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 you, Honestly, I didn't. You said that I said that uh, no. first cousin marriages are in Islam are allowed. I didn't say that. I said afterward when you bring this in. Did Mohammed want to marry his first cousin? Yes or no? I was giving the reference that she was his first cousin. Now, come on, why are you playing with words? Even I'm though, asking you. Even though I can entertain you on did that. Did Mohammed want to marry his in first Islam, cousin? Islam does not say it's haram to marry first cousin. Did Mohammed want to marry his first cousin? That doesn't mean Islam says you must marry first cousin. Did Mohammed so, Islam, want to him. marry his first cousin? That's like uh, uh, Zainab. Did yeah. he? Zainab. Yes, yes or no? Zainab. Yes. yes. Not because she was his first cousin. No, I didn't say, I'm not oh. saying that. So don't use no, the word I'm first not cousin. saying that. Did Mohammed want to marry his first cousin? Zainab. Say Zainab. Did Mohammed want to that marry his first cousin Zainab? You are implying, yes. You're implying yes the or argument no? here is he's, he wants to marry. Alright, I'll just cousin. ask it how he wants. Did Mohammed want to marry Zainab? Yes. Was Ma Zainab married at the time? Yes, but she was. There you go. No, no, she was. Thank you very much, Abbas. No, no. Mohammed wanted to no, marry no, no, no. a married woman no, no, no. called no, no, Zainab, no, 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 no. who was his no, first cousin. She was the, and that's why was, we need to follow no. Jesus, yes, she, not Mohammed. She was going to get divorced. Follow yes. Jesus. She was, don't marry your first cousins. And don't want to marry married women. That's adultery. She was going God to get hates divorce. And he hates. It's adultery. She was going to get divorced. She was going to get Tell divorced. Tell me, is it normal to want to have sex with the person you want to marry? Well, you have to have sex with another marry. So in other words, when Muhammad wanted to marry a married woman, it's logical to think that he also wanted to have sex with a married woman. There you go. This is wrong. That's from your own Quran. Your own Quran says that. This is you are the way you understand. Surah 33. Because of your mentality. Ayah 37. When I say sex is part of the marriage, that doesn't mean he was thinking of sex. That means thinking. On. Now she is going to be without husband, and I was the one responsible to give her Zain. So I take responsibility. When she was I, married, I take responsibility. Now he is going to give her divorce. When she so was I married, no, he was going to give her divorce. He came to her three Muhammad times. Mohammed wasn't going to give a divorce. No, no, Zain, Zain, Allah commanded Mohammed to get divorced. Mohammed said, "Fear Allah and keep your wife." Exactly. Yes. That's what Mohammed said. But, but Zain, so Mohammed knew didn't. better than Allah. Zain didn't. Zain didn't. They say I'm going to give a devil. So Muhammad can. The see. natural law can spoke in Muhammad's heart that what he was thinking was wrong, no, and that's why his first okay, instinct was to say, "Fear Allah, keep my, your wife." My last and then the sock puppet came down from heaven and said, "If you desire to marry a married woman, well, we'll divorce and we'll make adoption a non-thing, and then you can marry a married woman after she's been divorced." Can I, can I is the last word. What Bob is doing is, like most of the time commissioners do, they got it from the wrong end of the stick they hold it. What he's saying that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi because he has lust, that's why he want to marry her. We, I'm didn't saying, say that. I'm saying, I'm saying. At no I, point did I say that. Let me make my point. You can, you can say No, that I didn't say that, Abbas. Say it I said he wanted to because marry a married he woman. To marry That's her? what I said. Because then you say he wanted to have a sex with her. Didn't well, what kind of... Okay. Do right. you ever want to marry someone okay. you don't want to have so, sex so, with? So, 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 Name me one wife yes. that Muhammad yes. didn't yes. want to have yes. sex yes. with. Yes. 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 I mean, he had sex with all of them in one night and didn't even have a bath. I cannot even finish my statement. I mean, this is the problem with the... Wait, are you 
you complaining about interruption? No, because you are the one who's interrupting. Don't wait. I'm pretty sure the evidence will show that not only were you interrupting me, you sure but I said you sure that you would complain when I interrupt you, like you do every single time I talk about Now, I'm going to be interrupting Abbas and he will be complaining. He will be complaining. I, I said this is my statement, last word, what he did, two, three times he, he jumped into it. Why he has to do that? Why don't you finish it in the end? When I finish, you say, you are trying to imply that Muhammad Hassan in his mind was sex. That was your thinking is wrong. What I'm saying is that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't knew, say that he, at all. Can you do that? Oh, wait, are you complaining about interruption? No, because it's not fair. It's not right. But the, you, why, you weren't thinking it was unfair why, when you were doing why it. Why only me complaining of his interruption? Why he didn't? Go on, Abbas. I will. I, I will not interrupt think, you. Think about it, guys. Think finish, about it. Why? I finish. Finish, always, finish what you got to say. Always, always this happens. Finish what you got to say. Go on, Abbas. The point here is that Mama Sassam want to marry her because if you want to know the whole story, she was his cousin and he was his adopted son. Said. So he arranged this marriage. Now he can see. See what's happening with the marriage. It's not that overnight this thing happened. He was a father and he could see what's happening. He was an adopted father. So he could see what's happening over the over the time. Now he says the marriage is going to dissolve. Now she's going to be without her husband. So he in his heart thinks that should I marry her? Because what people will think I'm an adopted father. Allah says what is in your heart. Don't worry, you can marry her and I will make her marry. That's what it is. It's nothing about lust. It's nothing about he's just sexually, uh, uh, what do you call it, attracted towards her. It's about just as a noble feeling of a person who doesn't want one woman to be her own. So he takes responsibility. This is how I see it. This is nothing about anything wrong. I don't know what else they say. That's what I'm saying. Well, you are getting from the wrong end of the street. Abbas. Okay. It's a, despite the heat, it's a pleasure talking no, to no, you. I, any, any time. I hope I'm you're well. You, you what, what, I want, what I would like you to do is to go away and research about genetics. Go away what? and research That's about the complications. Right now. I will, and I will. Go away and research about the complications created by first cousin marriages and recognize that Christians outlawed this centuries before Islam even existed and then ask yourself how can Sharia law be perfect when it guides people into misguidance that causes them problems and higher rates of infant mortality. I think mortality. Christians, did, Christians did, even Jews don't. Okay. I'm pretty sure Jews you. also marry Abbas. in the same This is a gift for you. Have so a lovely day. Have a lovely day. Okay, so let, let's do a, a quick wrap up. So what we have, what, what we have, is the fact that is the fact that Muhammad wanted to marry a married woman, and if he wanted to marry a married woman, it's fair to assume that he was open to having sex with her, that he desired her physically, because who marries someone that they're not attracted to? Who, who marries someone that they're not attracted to? So he was attracted to her, he did want to marry her, and it was his first cousin. And for this reason, the marriage that he instinctively wanted to maintain was dissolved, and the woman was divorced, which contradicts God's law in the Old Testament, for God hates divorce. And then, Muhammad married his first cousin, setting a precedent that has misguided countless Muslims, leading to higher genetic defects, leading to higher rates of child mortality. But by this, they also dissolved the concept of adoption, which Christians have a high value of, because the Christ was adopted into the family of Joseph, fulfilling the prophecy that the Messiah would come from the line of David because an adopted son is everything equivalent to a born son by natural birth and Christ who is our example who was adopted into this family lays out that foundation so that a child who is adopted is received fully and completely into a family but in Islam an adopted son cannot even bear the name of their new family so what happens to those children who've been abandoned by bad parents they're forced to not have any family of their own because of Islamic teaching except in the material they can't claim that family as their own they're all 
clear and real differences between Islam and Christianity. And what we need in Europe is more Christianity and less Islam for the reasons given. Three, two, one, go.